This is the topic 6 of the chapter, Earth's Resources, and Applied Geology. In this topic, we will discuss the following three Earth's resources, that affect our daily life. The first is, surface water, and underground water, that exists on the Earth. The second is, economic mineral. The third is, hydrothermal. This three Earth's resources, will be detailed in the coming section of the lesson. We first talk about the surface water, and underground water. Surface water, is the water, that presents on the surface of the Earth. For example, the water from river, lake, pond, swamp, or ocean. Surface water on the Earth, will experience the water cycle as following. The water begins as the rain falls from clouds. Water of rain, that falls on the mountain, flows downhill as runoff to creeks and rivers. From rivers, water flows into lakes, swamps, dam, and eventually to the sea. The water from rivers, lakes, swamps, dam, and sea, evaporated to sky as cloud. And, prepared to start again as rain. Some of the surface water, will seep into the ground, and become the underground water. For definition, underground water, is the water, stored in beneath the Earth's surface. And, fills the empty spaces in soil, sand, and rock below a certain depth. Until it reaches an impermeable layer. Underground water, can flows out to the Earth's surface, through hot springs. Underground water can be extracted, from an aquifer, through the water well. An aquifer is an underground layer of water-bearing permeable, and porous rock. At which, the water can move easily. Aquifer is a natural underground water reservoir. And, it supply water to the rivers, during the shortage of rainfall, or drought. In the following contents, we will talk about The importance of surface water, and underground water, and their risks. Living thing, cannot live without water. This is the essential point of this topic. For us, human, we use water for the following activity. For domestic uses, we use water for bathing, cleaning floor, washing clothes, and many more. For agricultural uses, we use water to watering the crops. For industrial uses, we use water for cleaning, and processing raw materials. And also, water can be used as the cooling agents for hot engines. The following are the content, about the water on the Earth. 97.5% of the water on Earth's surface, is salt water, that found in the oceans. Which humans cannot drink. There is only, 2.5% of water on the Earth, is fresh water. And, most of them, are found in the form of ice caps, and glaciers. It mean that, very small percentage of fresh water, which can be used as raw water, are found as surface water in rivers, lakes, and swamps. As well as, under the ground, as underground water. The following contents, are about the water supply. Water treatment is required, before delivering to consumer. This is to ensure contaminants in the water, is eliminated before consuming. In Malaysia, the main raw water supply comes from the fresh water of Earth's surface. The rivers. The fresh water on the Earth's surface, being used as raw water, because process cost is lesser. About the crisis of surface water. Shortage of surface water, is a crisis of water. It is due to droughts. Water pollution, is a water crisis. It is by disposal of domestic and industrial waste, into the river. And, by excessive use of fertilizers, and pesticides in agriculture. About underground water. Underground water, is an alternative source of raw water. It is located far below the Earth's surface. Therefore, underground water less polluted, if compared to surface water. Underground water can be polluted by leaching of chemical fertilizers, and pesticides into the ground in agricultural areas. 
chemicals from industrial and domestic waste in the landfill. This is about the crisis of underground water. Underground water can be polluted by leaching of chemical fertilizers and pesticides into the ground in agricultural areas. And chemicals from industrial and domestic waste in the landfill. Therefore, water samples should be examined before drilling a well. Excessive drilling and pumping of underground water can drying up of rives, swamps, and sinkholes in limestone areas. All right, now we continue our lesson with topic economic mineral. A mineral is a naturally occurring element or compound that found in the earth's crust. Economic minerals are minerals economically important to us as they are either the sources of industrial materials of chemicals used in industrial processes. Basically, the economic minerals can be classified into three groups. They are metallic minerals, non-metallic minerals, and the rare earth minerals. They are part of the metallic minerals. Metallic minerals are the metallic elements with a various purpose in the earth. For example, aluminium is the raw material to make beverage can and build aircraft. Copper is the raw material to make electrical wiring. Gold is the raw material to make jewelers and electronic devices. Iron is the raw material to make cars and frame of buildings. Non-metallic minerals are referring mineral compound come from semi-metal and non-metal elements. They are used in various industrialations. Sand, clay, and sandstone are the minerals compound that contains silicon. They are used in concrete for building houses and roads. Mineral fuels, such as coal, natural gas, and petroleum, are the organic compounds that contain carbon and are used as fuels for motorized vehicles to produce electricity and used as material to produce plastics. There are 17 rare earth elements arranged on the periodic table and they are metallic elements. Rare earth elements are named as rare, this is not because their quantity is rare in Earth's crust. This is because, they are typically dispersed, and not often found concentrated in one place. In Malaysia, rare earth minerals, were found together with tin ores, from Perak and Selangor. Rare earth minerals used as materials, to produce various electronic devices. Such as, mobile phones, hybrid car batteries, and flat plasma panel displays. This topic is about the formation of petroleum and coal. Fossil fuels are hydrocarbons, primarily petroleum, natural gas, and coal. It is formed from the remains of the dead plants and animals millions of years ago. Natural gas and petroleum were formed from the remains of animals and plants which lived in the sea. Natural gas usually found at the top of the petroleum layer. The following are the sequence of the formation of petroleum and natural gas. The first stage is the remains of dead sea organisms buried in the mud and sand in the seabed. This happened in millions years ago. The second stage formation of the sediment layers in the sea. The formation of the sediment layers in the sea is due to the high pressure and high temperature. At the meantime, the remains of the Dead Sea organisms were only partially decomposed by the bacteria. The remains of the dead organisms will also experience high pressure and high temperature. And, eventually, they turn into natural gas and petroleum in two layers. Where, the natural gas is found exists on the top of the petroleum. And, they are trapped in between two layers of impermeable rocks. About the formation of coal, coal is formed from the remains of dead plants, millions of years ago. The following are the sequence of the formation of coal. The first stage is, the remains of the dead plants in swamp, buried under the mud, million years ago. In the second stage, 
the remains of the ants, experience high pressure, and high temperature. And eventually, the remains of the dead plants, turn into coal. Now, we continue the lesson with hydrothermal. Hydrothermal in the geology field, is referring to the underground hot water, which is heated by the internal heat of the earth. Steam is formed, when water in the earth, is heated by the heat, from the internal of the earth. The steam can be used, to drive turbines and power stations, to generate electrical energy. There are various minerals, such as gold, copper, tin, lead, silver. They can be produced, from the precipitation of the hydrothermal solution. The hydrothermal resource, also helps in ecotourism. Some places in Malaysia, were developed to be hot spring recreational parks, such as, Sungai Klaw Hot Spring. Now, we will talk about, the effects of human activity, on the environment. Our earth, is abundant with various natural resources, such as water, coal, petroleum, minerals, and forests. Overexploitation of natural resources, without proper planning, will cause a non-sustainable environment. The negative effects on the environment, such as, landslides, and flash floods, are due to the overexploitation of the natural resource. The following are the four main human activities that will bring negative effects to the environment. The first is agriculture. The second is mining. The third is logging. The fourth is industries. How the four activities bring negative impact effects to the environment. Tailed in the coming section. The following are about how agriculture bring a negative effect to the environment. The agricultural activity, involves the usage of a large scale of land, to grow the crops. Human gain the land, from deforestation. Deforestation, has destroyed the ecosystem in the forest. Which causes the loss of biodiversity of the earth. Deforestation, has destroyed the soil structure, which leads to land erosion, and landslides. Deforestation, will reduce the watersheds, which affect the quality of water resources. This is about, how mining bring a negative effect to the environment. Mining activity involves digging, or drilling of the soil, to get the minerals. Mining activity, has destroyed the soil structure, which leads to land erosion, and landslides. Mining, will lead to idle lands, and shallow rivers. Uncontrolled mining activities, can lead to the depletion of mineral resources. Such as, tin ore, iron ore, gold, and others. The following, are about the negative impacts of logging activity, to the environment. Forests are the habitats to organisms. Uncontrolled, and illegal logging, will lead destructions of the ecosystem of forests. Forests play a role, in heat dissipation. Uncontrolled logging, will lead to the change in, local weather. Trees in forests, need a long time to grow. Uncontrolled logging, will lead forests to take decades to recover. The following are about the negative impacts of industries, to the environment. Industrial sector, plays an important role in economic, and it is growing fast in Malaysia. The byproduct of factories, is large amounts of waste. And, improper disposal of the waste, will pollute the environment. Dispose of sewage, and toxic substances, into the nearby rivers. Kin causing the death of water organism. Emissions of the black smoke, from factories. Which contains many pollutants, will affect human health, such as, causing lung diseases. This is the full content of Topic 6. And, we have just completed the learning of Topic 9, Earth. Thank you for watching.